eye movements of that sort actually do suppress the amygdala, make hmm. people feel calmer, less fearful. And you were saying <clears throat> on a previous podcast, I heard you talk about like kind of lateral eye movement, moving your eyes back and forth. So as you're walking, are you kind of looking out of the corner of your eye, kind of going back and forth or returning our head? What's that look like? Okay. So, um, there's a process called eye movement desensitization reprocessing, which uh, it looks crazy, but I'll, I'll do it since I'm the one it, uh, talking about it. Basically, moving the eyes from side to side like this has been shown to reduce the activity of the amygdala, one of the primary threat detection fear centers in the brain. When I first heard about this stuff, I thought it was crazy. I thought someone crazy made this up. There's no neuroscience to support that. But actually, there's some imaging studies to support that eye movements of that sort actually do suppress the amygdala make hmm. people feel calmer, less fearful. And when you walk, you naturally do this with your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to move your head from side to side, just as long as you have optic flow going by, your eyes are reflexively doing some of this. Eyes do have to be open, it's not up and down. If people are visually impaired, if there are any blind folks listening to this, then they know how to do that actually with their hearing, panoramic hearing versus mm -hmm. cone of attention with hearing. But blind people are very good at doing this. Mm -hmm. um, but for most people who are sighted, moving your eyes from side to side for 10 to 30 seconds is going to calm you down. And this makes really good sense because from an evolutionary perspective and adaptive perspective, we've always been confronted with threats, interpersonal threats, inter animal to human threats. Forward movement is the way that you suppress the fear response. Mm -hmm. Typically we think about freezing and backing up, though that happens, but then the fear response to just tends to increase actually. Yeah. So you don't want to do anything stupid, but if you're trying to move forward in a, in a challenge, move your eyes from side to side. I will do this sometimes when I feel like I have to get out and run and I'm feeling lazy. Mm. I always think, oh, maybe I need more coffee. Maybe I need to increase my amount of energy. But sometimes it's not just about level of activation and energy. Sometimes it's really just about having too much anxiety for some reason. I'm not a particularly anxious person, but sometimes you just have too much energy in your system and it's all discombobulated. This can also put you in that really ideal state of mind, which is, alert but calm. I always say alert but calm is great for most things. It's not great for a thousand 80 pound squat, but it's great for most times of day. You guys actually I, have always struck me as very calm people. So, um, you know, you don't seem like somebody who's very reactive, Mark. You no. either didn't seem, <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. No. But some people are reactive, right? They wake up in the morning, they're stressed, they're angry, they're tired. You know, a lot of people feel that way. So this is the first place you start with making better habits? I think starting with physiology, yeah. Learn to take some control of your internal state. Double inhale, exhale to calm down. So two inhales through the nose, long exhale through the mouth. Learn the relationship between eye movements and, and getting calm. Learn to increase the aperture of your visual world and notice where your mind goes. Those are big, those are big ones in terms of learning how to steer your nervous system. Yeah. These are these are the steering wheel accelerator and brake of your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about this because we were talking about it a little bit when we were working out, but you mentioned that when you were younger that um, you didn't have the best ability to focus. And nowadays you sit down for hours on end reading study after study, research after research. And it's just, just interesting seeing who you are now versus who you were before. I think a lot of people have a problem focusing these days and they're trying to figure out, am I, do I have ADD? Like, am I not able, is that just not something I'm going to be able to do? With a lot of people struggling with that, what are some practical things that they can start to try to implement so that they can increase their ability to focus on single tasks at, their, at that moment in time? Yeah, well, the phone is definitely detrimental to this because you have so many contexts within your phone. I mean, your phone is showing you 50, with the equivalent of like 50 television shows in, mm -hmm. in 10 seconds, so, you know, flip, 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 maybe not 10 seconds, 20 seconds. But, um, you know, the brain will follow the visual system in so many ways. So if you really want to enhance your ability to focus, mm -hmm. put the phone away for two minutes, literally two minutes, just put it across the room or in another room, sit down, pick a point on the wall and just try and relax, breathe however you want while maintaining visual focus for 120 seconds on a location. You can blink if you want to. Uh, if you don't need to blink, don't blink because actually every time you blink, you reset your time perception. Mm. Blinks are like a curtain in a, in a play or a, it's like a scene clapper in the, for movies. But just sit there and try and extend the amount of time that you can focus. And again, you can blink what you'll find is it, it's incredibly boring and agitating. 
like most things you need to focus on and have a hard time focusing on. So we all can focus much better on things we really, really enjoy. But just a little bit of focus training for two, three minutes every once in a while will teach you to recognize when you have that impulse to get up and move or, and it, or suddenly jump to another activity. And what you'll find is that it carries over to a really terrific ability to read, to study, to listen. And you start to notice those internal signals, like why the urgency to move? Why the urgency to go away? Well, maybe the conversation's no good and you wanna get away. That's fine, that's a different matter. But there's something you need to do and you don't wanna do it or you can't focus. It's fine to think about hydration, food, caffeine, that's great. But chances are you just haven't really taught your brain how to focus. So start with your visual focus and then let your mental focus follow that. I still do this for a couple minutes each day. I'll go outside, I'll take a walk, which is no focus, everything just walking by. And then I'll finish by, instead of looking at my phone, I'll try and just pick a point. People probably think I'm pretty strange if they see me doing this. <laughs> just pick a point and look at that point for a short while. And, and then I'll just sort of notice, huh, that was actually a lot harder than you might think. But I do believe that part of being a functional adult, being a high functioning person in any domain of life is being able to control your impulses to do something different. And you see this in the gym, actually. Uh, this is another place you could do this. So have you ever done this where you set, uh, probably you guys haven't, but you set out to do, let's say a set of curls. You're like, okay, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do alternating dumbbell curls, right? And then at some point you switch to doing them simultaneous. And then you see people switching and doing them alternate. Now there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I know that freestyling things can be very beneficial going by feel. But sometimes, and for some people, sticking to a regimen is actually what they need to learn how to do. And the gym is a great place to learn how to do that. Mm. So having a plan and sticking to that plan, even if it's uncomfortable, is its own form of exercise, independent of the physical training that you're doing. Does that make sense?